friends, this is Miss Cross, and I'm excited to be here with you today to read part of a really interesting book to you. And right now you're looking at the front cover of our Read Aloud that we're actually going to work on today and tomorrow, and it is called Emmanuel Stream. And if you notice on the cover, Emmanuel Stream, underneath that it says, The True Story of Emmanuel Ofosu Yeboa. Okay, and this kind of reminds me of a story we read last week, Beatrice's Goat, because that name doesn't really sound like a name that I hear in Georgia very often. Perhaps he's from another part of the world. So we're going to look today into this story. I want you to notice the front cover. Look at the front cover and see if you see anything interesting about this character or about Emmanuel. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of information. Last week, remember, we talked about all these sticky notes and how we like to fill our book up with notes that we take. So first, I want to give you some things here to think about as you listen to this story, okay? So I want you to think about possible themes. What could the theme of this story be? And if you remember, theme is kind of like a lesson a story is teaching you or something the author really wants you to know after reading this story. We also want to think about what lessons do the characters learn and teach us as a reader. So sometimes when we read, we see characters learn lessons, and sometimes those characters teach us lessons. Then finally, I want you to think about if you can make any personal connections with this story. Okay, so those are kind of things to keep in your mind as we read to you. Now, this is a little background on this story. So this is a true story about a boy with one working leg. Only one of his legs works, but he overcomes many challenges. He is a character that develops through his experiences to show everyone that he may be different, but that doesn't mean he can't do lots of things and accomplish his dreams. So when we look back at the front cover, we now, if you didn't notice before, you might know his leg. He only has one leg. And I love to ride my bike, but I don't know if I could do it with one leg. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Now, I also want you to think about, in the back of your mind, last week we listened to Miss McGrath read some stories, or a story to us that was a window, and a story to us that was a mirror. And I want to think as we read this, does this seem more like a mirror for most of us, or for, or does it seem like a window? Okay, Emmanuel's dream. Okay, and on the title page, we see the mom here, and I see a connection here to Pecan Pie Baby. This mom looks like she might be pregnant. And here I see a connection to Beatrice's goat. If you remember in that story, she, the people carried bananas on their heads, and she has some sort of maybe fruit here. And look at this. This looks like a map. And this word Ghana is a country in Africa. And I see a star here and it says Accra. So I'm wondering if maybe Accra might be a city in Ghana where this story happens. So let's find out. I'm going to show you this picture. Alright. So here we have somebody and this looks like a mom and a baby. And over here we have somebody else. And I want you to notice him as I read. In Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born. Two eyes blinked in the light. Two healthy lungs let out a powerful cry. Two tiny fists opened and closed, but only one strong leg kicked. So over here we see this beautiful baby boy. He looks plump and healthy, bright eyes, his fists. We see only one leg though. And when we look over here, this guy doesn't look too happy. I'm wondering if that's the dad. And it's hard to see his face because his head is down. And I'm wondering if he's sad. Now, normally when babies are born, people are very excited. But I wonder if something about Emmanuel might be making him feel a little worried or a little sad. Most people thought he would be useless or worse, a curse. His father left never to return. But his mother had faith. Her name was Comfort, and she named her first child Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So 
look over here, we can see the dad leaving. And we can see mom, whose name is Comfort, and that's what she's doing to the baby. She's holding him and loving him and having faith in him, even though he seems like he's going to be a little different. So I want to think about what that tells us about the different characters. What do we infer about mom based on how she's acting? And what do we infer about dad based on how he is acting? As Emmanuel grew, Mama Comfort told him he could have anything, but he would have to get it for himself. He learned to crawl and hop, to fetch water and climb coconut trees. He even shined shoes to make money, to earn money. So when Mama tells him he could have anything his, he wants, but he has to do it for himself. I wonder what lesson he might be learning. What is Mama Comfort teaching Emmanuel by saying, you can do anything, but you have to do those things by yourself? Most kids with disabilities couldn't go to school. Still, Emmanuel's mother carried him there until one day she said, you are too heavy. From then on, Emmanuel hopped to school and back, two miles each way, on one leg, all when I think about that, he is hopping to school two miles each way. It might be hard for some of us to walk two miles, let alone hop on one leg. So again, I'm thinking that this is teaching us something about Emmanuel and also about his mom when she decides it's time for him to do this on his own. At first, nobody would play with him. So Emmanuel saved his money and bought something none of his classmates had, a brand new soccer ball. Of course he would share it, if he could play too. Lunging and spinning on crutches, his, grandmothers had found, his grandmother had found for him and kicking the ball with his good left foot. Emmanuel earned their respect. So he's earning their respect. He's showing them how hard he's working to be willing to play what a big, exciting moment this was. This shows us that he is very determined because he's not giving up and he's earning the respect of all of these other boys. His new friends sometimes used their lunch money to rent bikes. Would Emmanuel be able to join them? His friend Goodwin pushed, push, excuse me, pushed him fast so he could balance. Over and over again, Emmanuel fell hard. But finally, road. Again, he's having a hardship. He's falling down over and over again, but eventually he did it. Look at him. He did not give up, and now he is riding this bike by himself. When Emmanuel was 13, Mama Comfort got very sick. She could no longer sell vegetables at the market, and Emmanuel's sister and brother were too little to work. He would have to support them. Against his mother's wishes, Emmanuel snuck out and boarded a midnight train to the bustling city of Accra, 150 miles away, alone. Remember, that's the city we saw on the map at the beginning. So his mom is sick, his brother and sister are very small, and he realizes that he has to step up. He didn't know it then, but it would be two years before he saw his family again. So he is making the decision to stand up for his family and go out on his own. We can only imagine what that must have felt like for him when he did that all by himself. Emmanuel arrived full of hope. There were so many people, but no one would hire him. Now we're going to have to infer based on what we know with him about Emmanuel, why nobody might hire him. And if you look, this kind of reminds me of the invisible boy. We see all these bustling colorful people, and then right here we see Emmanuel kind of dark and sad looking by himself. Shopkeepers and restaurant owners told him to go out and beg like other disabled people did. Emmanuel refused. Finally, a food stand owner offered him a job and a place to live. So people are telling him what to do, what other disabled people did, but he, for some reason, felt different, and he refused to just become a beggar. He wanted to earn money, and he kept going, and finally, someone is going 
to give him a chance. So here's the shopkeeper. He looks like a happy guy, doesn't he? When Emmanuel wasn't serving drinks, he kept busy by shining shoes. He earned money and he sent it home. One morning, when Emmanuel went to buy shoe shining supplies, the shopkeeper thought he was there to beg and scolded him. Insulted, Emmanuel slammed his money down on the counter. The shopkeeper apologized, but Emmanuel would never forget. And this is where I'm going to stop reading, guys. I'm going to pause and hopefully leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger. Miss McGrath is going to finish reading this story for us tomorrow. But I want to think about this page really quickly before we stop. This happy-looking guy, when Emmanuel walks in, he assumed, he inferred something about Emmanuel. He thought, because Emmanuel was disabled, that he had come there to beg. And Emmanuel was very hurt by that. He was angry. We could infer that he was angry in the way that he slammed his money on the counter. Now, the shopkeeper realized he made a mistake, and he did apologize, but Emmanuel would never forget. So, I have enjoyed starting this book with you, and I can't wait to hear the end of it tomorrow. Remember those things we're thinking about and continue those tomorrow. The lessons the characters are learning, the lessoners, lessons the characters are teaching us, and any personal connections you might have with this story. All right, guys, I will be back to read to you again soon. Have a great day. Bye.